Howdy guys. In this next intro to VEX video, what we are going to do is we are going to walk through how to generate the surface directions from just a given set of points. And we're going to generate these surface directions based off of the hit uh, points that are detected from some sort of terrain. So you can see here what I have is a terrain that I'm generating with a height field. And I've just applied some really simple noise to it. But when we go and we actually change the offset of the noise on that height field, you can see that all these surface directions are actually pointing down the slope. And we're also getting the right hand side of the actual direction. And we also have the normal information. So what I wanted to do is just walk through it because it's a good like fundamental um, exercise in using VEX and how to pull out information from primitives uh, using the intersect function. Now we've taken a look at the intersection func function before, but we've never really gone into a great amount of uh, detail and depth into some of the output parameters that it provides. So what I want to do is I want to start this off. I'm going to hide this and I'm going to turn on the grid here really quick over here and I'm going to create a new geometry node. Okay. And I'm just going to call this uh, surface directions video, something like that. All right. So uh, what I want to do in here is create that height field just so we have a terrain to snap to. So right off the bat, uh, these terrains come out quite large. Um, and uh, I just want a little test area. So I'm just going to make it 50 by 50. And uh, then what I'm going to do is create a height field noise. So I'm just going to start typing out noise and grab that height field noise node. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. So let's scale this down quite considerably. So I'm going to type in 50 for the amplitude. And the element size is going to come in uh, quite a bit as well. And I also want to go back to the height field node itself and just start to mess around with the grid spacing so I get a little bit more resolution. It's just going to give me some more um, surface to work with. All right, it was a little low res before. So uh, what I want to do now, I'm going to bring down that amplitude even more. I just don't really need all that height. I just want to kind of, you know, have a nice little test area here to play with. So. With that, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go and convert it to a mesh. So I'm gonna drop down a convert height field node over here, like so. And uh, I think the density is all right. We can maybe pump it up a little bit more. You know, it's not too bad, just like that. All right, so uh, what we wanna do now is create just a really simple grid. So I'm gonna drop down a grid and I actually have a preset already set up. And that just basically sets the size to one in both directions and the rows and columns to two. So this is perfect. I'm going to use this grid to scatter points onto. And these points are then going to get snapped to this height field that we just created. Okay. So let's go in here and I'm actually going to make it 10 by 10 in here instead of one by one. All right. If we take a look at the reference, maybe we go a little bigger. Let's do something like 30 by 30. And I'll actually copy this first parameter, the X parameter here, and put it into the, the Y just so I can just mess with this one. That makes it a little more procedural since we are doing procedural stuff here. Okay, so I am going to drop down a scatter node. Alrighty. And this will give me a, a set of points. So what I'm going to do is just kind of limit it. I'm just going to put it down to 100 for now. So in this max points right here, what I'm going to do is set it to 100. And just mess with the global seed there just to get a different layout. Okay. So this is working out pretty good so far. So what we want to do is now uh, get the snapping working. So I'm going to drop down a wrangle node, an attribute wrangle node. Okay. And I'm going to feed the scatter points into that first input right there. Okay. And then I'm going to take the height field and pass that into that second input. That's going to be input index one. And this is index zero right there. Okay. So we're going to use both these pieces of data right here to um, perform the snapping and surface direction calculations. Okay. Okay. So the first thing what I want to do inside of this wrangle node, okay, is I want to get the points just above the terrain all the way to the top here. All right. So I'm going to come into the VEX expression window right here and I'm going to actually hit alt E and that'll bring up the actual uh, script editor they have for VEX. So it's just gives me a little bit more room because this script is going to kind of end up being a little long. So all right, so let's get the points sitting just above the terrain there. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a new vector. And we're going to set this vector variable name to max height. And I'm going to use the get BB box max function and pass in input one. Remember, input one is our terrain. Okay. 
this would be input zero. So we're going to get the max bounding box from the terrain itself. So with that information, what we could do is we can say at P, so that's the position of the current point that we're running over. We're going to set its Y position to equal that max height plus a value of one, just, just to nudge it up a little higher. So if I hit apply down here, you'll notice that the points, and I actually made a mistake. I need to put max height dot Y. There we go. Hit apply. You'll notice now the points are hovering just above the terrain. So this is perfect because I want to basically cast a ray down from each particular point. All right. And it will then detect whether or not it's going to hit that surface. So we need them above the terrain right there. Okay. So that is good. So we should always, you know, utilize uh, comments as much as possible. All right. So what I'm going to do is just say uh, set points above terrain. All right. So. Then what we're going to do is we're going to intersect the terrain and snap. All right. All right. So to do this, what we're going to do is we are going to create our output variable. So our first output variable is going to be the hit position. So if we do, in fact, get a hit, so we're going to store it into this hit position variable. And then we also need the uh, vector called out UVW. All right. And that's just the name I'm coming up with. Okay. But we're going to store basically the UV information, UV position that we hit at, and we get we gather that from the primitive that we hit, and we can actually use that to derive what the normal is for the current point based off of what the normal is on the primitive. So let's take a look at see how all this works. So to do the intersection, what I'm going to do is uh, type out int hit is equal to intersect. All right, and we're going to intersect with geometry one or input one. That's the terrain. Okay, so that's why I'm putting a one in there. And then if we actually go to the help for this, all right, so if I hover my mouse over the intersect function here and hit F1 on the keyboard, it will take me directly to the intersect function over here. So we want the origin, all right, so that's just going to be at P. That's the position of the current point that we're working on. It wants a direction vector, all right. So uh, what I'm going to do is just set this to something really large. I'm just going to say a negative 500 and zero. All right. And then we want to output the position and the UVW. So we're actually using this particular override right here. So I'm going to do another comma and we're going to say hit pause goes into that first argument there and then out UVW goes into that second. Cool. So now we're getting the position and the UV information about where the point was hit from the raycast onto the terrain. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say if hit is greater than or equal to zero. All right. And the reason why that works is because the intersect function is going to return the ID. All right. The prim num basically of the primitive that we hit. All right. That's an integer value. So if we were to actually visualize this here in, in the editor, so if I turn on my prim numbers, all right, and actually we'll switch over to the terrain for this particular one, every, primitive in here has an ID. That's that prim num. All right. So that's what's going to be output into this particular hit integer. Okay. So if it's greater than or equal to zero, all right, then we hit something because the last or the first, I guess you should say, uh, primitive is primitive zero. If it's negative one, then we didn't hit anything. All right. So let's turn off those prim nums and uh, let's go back to our attribute wrangle right here and just template the terrain again. All right, and uh, let's go and say, well, if we hit something, then our position, this is the easy one, is equal to hit pause. All right, so that'll get all the points to actually snap to the surface. Voila, very nice. Okay, and what I want to do now, though, is I want to extract the primitive normal, okay, that the point actually hit, and I want to assign that normal direction to the point. So now we, we can generate a normal for our particular point. Okay, so... Uh, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is declare a new variable called the uh, wanted normal. And this is going to be equal to uh, the prim uv function. Now, we haven't seen this one before. And uh, what we are going to do is quickly take a look at the help for this. Okay. So the prim uv vex function uh, returns the position using intrinsic primitive uvs. All right. This is what we want because what we're getting is uv information from uh, our terrain that we're hitting. Okay. And to, to use this, what we need to do is give it a geometry. So we're going to look at 
the terrain geometry. So we need to put one in there. That's the second input. That's the input that we're putting the, the geometry into, the terrain geometry. Uh, we need the attribute name. So we're looking for the normal. So that attribute name is N. Okay. And then the primitive number. And again, like I said, this hit variable is storing that primitive that we hit. So that's the, that's the prim num. And then we want to use the out UVs. All right. That's the position that we want to sample from. All right. So that's how that prim UV function works. So this is going to return for us that normal. And you can pull out any attribute using this particular information. All right. You just need to change this attribute name. Okay. Finally, what we can do is we can say at n is equal to that wanted normal. And with that, we will get normals for our particular points. And they're completely perpendicular to the actual surface of the terrain. So what we want to do now that we got all of that uh, working, I should spell this correctly as well. Uh, what we want to do now is just build the surface directions for all of these guys. All right. And so what we're looking for is the right direction and the forward direction. So we have the y direction basically. So what I want to do is build the surface directions like so. And this is actually quite simple, but uh, the first step to do this is to flatten out the actual y normal. So what we want to do is we want to say that uh, vector flat norm is equal to at n first off. Okay. And then we're going to say the flat norm dot y is equal to zero. And then we need to normalize it. So we're going to say flat norm is equal to normalize flat norm. Easy peasy. All right. So then if we visualize that by assigning the normal to flat norm, or assigning flat norm to the normal. <laughs> uh, what we want to do is uh, do that, apply it, and you can see that we have the normal now that is pointing in the slope of the, the actual terrain. So this is very useful information for us. All right, so I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, what we want to do now is build two new vectors, so the right and the, the forward. Okay, so the right is easy enough. We're going to do v at right. So we're making an attribute that actually sits on the points. All right. This isn't a local variable. Okay. And we're going to do the cross product of the flat norm. All right. With the complete world normal. All right. So the y direction or the up direction world space. All right. If we hit apply. All right. And accept that what we can do is actually visualize this with the visualize node. So let's get the visualize node out here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is go into the visualizers area here, and we're going to call this right and right for those two. And I'm going to set this to a marker. Okay. And I'm going to set that to a vector and then assign for the attribute, assign that right attribute that we just created. And you can see now that we actually have that perpendicular right direction. And what I need to do, or I want, what I want to do is give it that red color. Usually that's indicated, indicating that it's the right direction. Okay. So let's go back and uh, let's actually name this node to right, just so we know what it's doing. And let's open up our text editor or script editor here using alt E and let's create that other forward direction. So I'm just going to abbreviate that with F W D and we're going to do the cross product of the normal. So the actual up direction on the point. So the normal and the right direction, and this will give us that forward direction. So let's hit apply and accept. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another visualize node by holding down alt, just hold it down and then drag the right node out and create a copy of that just so we don't have to, you know, type in too much stuff up here. And I'm going to call this the forward. And so we can rename this really quickly. And we're going to give it the forward attribute. And then I'm going to go and give it that blue vector. And with that, we have completed our, our surface direction. So now we have a complete directionality. So we have a bunch of vectors that are defining, you know, how this particular point is facing down the slope. We have the right direction and the up direction. So you can use all that information to do quite a bit of things. Um, and if we move, the surface at all. All right. So we come back up to this noise up here and we change the offset. You can see that the points themselves are reorienting themselves to their new slopes. So 
very useful information. All right, so I'm going to close out the uh, lecture there, the video there, and in the next uh, couple of videos, we're going to cover, you know, a couple more cool features. We're going to do some more searching algorithms, and um, we're going to get into more like plotting functions, stuff that's really useful when you're doing procedural modeling. Okay, thanks so much.